coconut kefir using the raw coconut meat. Okay, so what you're gonna need is either two cups of raw coconut meat directly from the coconut, or you can also get frozen grated coconut. Any Asian supermarket in the frozen section should have a frozen coconut meat. You're also going to need about a two liter or two quart glass jar, a very powerful blender, or in my case, I use a food processor because my blender isn't very strong. Filtered water, and you're also gonna need, of course, the kefir grains. Okay, so the whole point of this blending step is that the grated coconut meat that I get isn't grated finely enough for me to get enough milk out of it. So I like to grate it very fine, almost to a paste-like consistency. So step one is just to process it in the food processor for a really long time, basically until all the meat is totally pulverized. So this is the consistency of it right now. If you can see it's in, you know, it's kind of chunky looking and I am going to blend it up and I'll show you what it looks like afterward. Okay, so I let it run for about 10 minutes and I mixed it once and as you can see, the consistency is a lot thinner. It's almost like a paste. You can see here, I'll just see that. That's how it should look. Now, if you have a Vitamix, you can just get away with mixing the grated coconut meat with water and just blending it like that and it should be powerful enough to break up the coconut to get the milk out of it and you can just skip this step. Okay, the next step is to actually mix it with the water. So I have an immersion blender here, so I have to do it in three batches. I'm not sure how many batches you'd have to do it if you had a regular blender. I'm thinking probably three, two. What you do is you just get your coconut meat and you just you know, put a third of it in. And then you fill up your jar or your blender with water as far as you can. Okay, so it's filled up as far as it will go and basically I just pulse it for, I don't know, maybe like 10-ish seconds. The whole point is just to get all of the nutrients dispersed into the water so that it is milky. Next you get your, your jug or whatever you're putting your kefir in. And I personally like to use a strainer. If you want, you can use a nut milk bag, but I find a strainer works a lot less messier and it's a lot less work. So I just put, put it on top. And I... Like so. And you just um, squeeze it out. I just squeeze it out like that. And you just keep going till all the water is out. Have a dry, flavorless fiber left. That's all that's left. You can either discard this or you could use it for baking if you're gonna make homemade granola bars or something. And you just keep doing that until you've used up all your coconut meat. Okay, so this is how you make fresh coconut milk as well. So we have it here. And then the last thing you do is you take your kefir grains here. I don't really measure them out. This looks like a um, just over a tablespoon of it. I think a teaspoon would be fine though. You make sure you use plastic utensils to handle them. And you just put them in there like that. Then you just put a cloth on or um, a piece of cheesecloth, something that the air can get through and put a rubber band over it and you put it in a dark warm place for 24 hours then you should have coconut kefir and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's finished 
Okay, so this is what your kefir should look like. It has been just over 24 hours. And as you can see, the fat has separated from the <clears throat> water. It's risen up to the top, and that's fine. So what you're gonna need is another glass jug and a strainer. And you're just gonna strain out the kefir grains. So it should smell, it should smell sour. As you can see, it's a lot thinner than the milk kefir. It doesn't thicken up the way that milk does, and that's fine. It doesn't mean that the coconut kefir isn't any less good for you. So that's how you make it, guys. If you have any questions, just let me know, and I will see you next video. Alright, bye!